Hey everybody and welcome back to another video and today I am going to be covering something pretty special and that is the 54th Super Bowl uh, of all time. Super Bowl LIV or as most sane people call it, Super Bowl 54. And it's basically tradition on this channel to do these things. I do them once a year, cover them the night before the Super Bowl, and I just kind of have a fun time picking my predictions for this game and talking about the players. So, it's that time of year where uh, everyone can just relax, sit down on a couch, bring out the snacks, whether it's the chips and dip, whether it's the Doritos, whether it's the pretzels and hummus, whether it's the buffalo wing, I do not care. We can all agree on one thing, and that's that we are ready to experience some awesome football. Uh, that wasn't really the case last year. 13-3, <laughs> and three, yeah, what a, what a good game that was. Anyway, we're not here to talk about last year's catastrophe of a Super Bowl. We're here to talk about this year's, hopefully not catastrophe of a Super Bowl. And that is between... The San Francisco 49ers, representing the NFC, and the Kansas City Chiefs, representing the AFC. So, two teams that we have not seen in the Super Bowl for a while, especially the Chiefs. They haven't done it in 50 years, I believe, so that's that's epic. They, they finally made it to the big game after years and years of just total misery. But, yeah, that's just basically the overview. Now let's get a little bit more in-depth. So let's start out with the AFC, with the Kansas City Chiefs. Now this is a team that has faced misery after misery after just complete playoff ineptitude. And we thought that this would, would just repeat itself because, you know, it did it, they did it last year and they still have Andy Reid, they still have all the players, and nothing has really changed, but this year, they found their mojo, especially with with the Patriots, oh, sorry, that keeps on rotating, especially with the Patriots being out of the wild card, and the Ravens losing in the divisional round, like, they had, all they had to do was beat the Titans, which they only had one player on their team, <laughs> Derrick Henry, but they are good, and this offense especially is looking stout. Patrick Mahomes, who I'm going to get to in a second, Tyreek Hill, just an epic dude who's been catching, who's been catching bombs left and right, uh, Damian Williams, who isn't the most well-known of running backs, but is still a very solid uh, running back, and Travis Kelsey, who I'll also get into in a minute. But long story short, this Chiefs offense is epic. But now let's look at the man himself, Kermit the Frog, Patrick Mahomes, the MVP of last year. Uh, this guy is just a beast. Like, ever since he's been a starter, he's been lighting up the NFL. He's, like completely defined what it is to be a modern quarterback. And a lot of people are going to say Lamar Jackson did it, but he's basically a clone of Michael Vick. This guy is the modern quarterback. He is epic. He's, like, one of the best I've seen ever. And I really think that if he wins a Super Bowl, I think it'll be fitting because this guy is just epic. And he also has an awesome personality and an awesome voice on Gridiron Heights. But that being said, let's move on to his tight end. And here we have the Chiefs version of Gronk, Travis Kelsey, number 87. Now, um, this guy is just epic. He's not as good as George Kittle, whom I will get to in a bit, but he has still been one of the best tight ends in the 2010s, of the 2010s, excuse me, and he's just been an asset for Patrick Mahomes, and I do not think that this will change in the Super Bowl. I think that he's going to catch at least two touchdowns, because he, he's just electrifying, and the dynamic he has with Patrick Mahomes is great. So... I think I basically covered the Chiefs' offense. I'm going to keep it brief this time because I don't want it to get corrupted. So, I'm going to move on to the NFC. The San Francisco 49ers, who have had 
one of the best comeback years I've ever seen in football. Last year they were three and thirteen, I believe, or four and twelve. But this year they have just been stellar. Like it may have been due to the fact that all their good players were injured. I mean Gronk or not Gronk, Kittle, basically the same thing. Kittle was not injured last year, but they they have Jimmy G now, they have Bo- Nick Bosa now, Richard Sherman's been playing better, which I'll get to in a minute. But yeah, San Francisco 49ers, a bounce-back team, all right, a bounce-back team to be sure. But let's take a look at their offense, and man, it is stout. Jimmy G, Kittle, uh, and some lesser-known receivers, uh, Marquise Goodwin, uh, Bourne, Kendrick Bourne, Debo Samuel, I think. Yeah, Debo Samuel. They're not well known, but I think that's to their benefit because, like, they can shock people. They can shock. They've done it many, many times. They've they've come in clutch when they've needed to. But let's take a look at the QB. And here we have Jimmy Jesus, Jimmy Garoppolo, the quarterback for the San Francisco 49ers. And this guy has has been a pretty good record. He's been managed. He's basically a game manager like Alex Smith. I'm not comparing him to Alex Smith. He's way better than Alex Smith. (laughs) But I'm just saying, in the playoffs, he didn't really do much. But I think that's okay because... He can manage the game. He doesn't throw much turnovers, which is good. And I think he can still pull off some pretty good stuff. Maybe some passing touchdowns to Kittle. Uh, Because, you know, he's got Kittle under his belt. That's that's definitely a very, very good asset. But let's move on to his tight end, whom I previously mentioned. And here we have Gronk 2.0. George Kittle, man, this guy is electric, not just on the field, but in personality, like, uh, he's, he's made, uh, many references to the WWE, can you smell what the Niners are cooking, that sort of thing, but he surely, surely plays like it, he is one of a kind, that's for sure, he's one of a kind, he's been one of the best tight ends in the league, maybe even the best tight end in the league, and he just refuses to go down. If you've seen uh, their game at the Saints, at one of the last plays, he just refuses to take any hits. Like, he, I think he had, like, three, defensor, th- three defenders on him, and he still, like, drived for three more yards or something. I don't know. But this guy is epic, and he's definitely going to be a very potent weapon for the Niners. But let's talk about the other side of the ball, the defense. And this defense is stacked. Nick Bosa, Richard Sherman, DeForest Buckner, D. Ford, Fred Warner, and many other names that I forgot because I'm kind of dumb. Anyway, but these guys are epic. They got defensive uh, rookie of the year in Nick Bosa. And Richard Sherman, who has already had a Super Bowl, Super Bowl under his belt, so pretty experienced guy. And I don't know, this Niners defense is just epic, stellar. Any compliment you could gear towards them, they're most likely very deserving of it because they have just shut down offensive offenses left and right. I think there's, I think they've only give up, given up. 300 yards twice in a season against the Ravens and Saints or the Ravens and Seahawks. I do not remember. Anyway, this defense is awesome and it'll be interesting to see how they fare against the Chiefs offense. But let's move on to the coaches, the people who don't get as much fame, but are still as much deserving as the players. Let's start off with Andy Reid, the coach for the Chiefs. Uh, all also nicknamed the walrus, and he surely does look like one, but we're not here to make fun of the guy because it's already been played to death, and I don't think he deserves it. I think he's quite an underrated coach. A lot of people say that he only focuses on one side of the ball, which I can kind of see it. I I can kind of agree with it, but 
you got to give the guy some credit. you got to give the guy some credit. He He's already made a Super Bowl before at, in the Eagles, but he lost to the Patriots 24-21 to uh, about a decade back, or a couple of decades back. And this guy is no- was notorious for choking in the playoffs, but he just didn't this this year. In fact, he was the one who made the other teams choke, especially the Texans. They overcame a 24-0 lead in the divisional round against the Texans, and I don't see them, I don't see them stopping because of this guy. This guy is an offensive genius. He's been building like the perfect NFL offense, and I think I could, I'd compare him to the likes of John Harbaugh, who won Coach of the Year. Don't know if Harbaugh was as deserving as Mike Tomlin, but I digress. This guy is underrated, but I don't think he's as underrated as the other coach that I'm going to talk about. Kyle Shanahan, the man responsible for the greatest choke in NFL history, 28-3. If this man wins again, I'm going to have to stop making 28-3 jokes forever. And uh, that's not a thing I want to do. I mean, my character shirt literally has 20-3 on it, and I'm going to have to erase that if he doesn't... If he wins. Ah, man, I just realized. But this guy is underrated. A lot of people are still liking, likening him to the 28-3 to 3 choke. And I think he's moving on from that. He's said again and again uh, how he's going to move on from the 28-3 to 3 choke. And I respect that, you know. He's definitely put on... He's definitely put together one of the most balanced teams I've seen in a while. Like, good offense, good defense. Like, there's not much flaws with his team. And I think that's something to respect. So... Kyle Shanahan, very, very underrated coach. But how is it going to turn out? How do you, th- how is the score going to be? I find this really tricky to figure out because, unlike most times, I'm not quite sure of what's going to happen because I'm one for one. No, I'm one for two in my Super Bowl predictions and. I'm pretty sure I'm going to get this wrong, so if you're a Niners or Chiefs fan, leave it down below. Uh, If I pick your team, I'm sorry, but I've just had a strong feeling in my gut ever since the NFC Championships and AFC Championships ended. I've had a strong feeling in my gut that the Niners are going to win, and it has not changed. Uh... Last time I predicted it to be a score fest, and it was not. I think this game is going to be lower scoring than people are going to think. But my final prediction is Niners 28 and Chiefs 21. Yeah, Niners 28 and Chiefs 21. I don't know. I think both defenses are going to be stopping them. And I don't think it's going to be as low, as high scoring as people will say. So, uh, that's it for the video. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, be sure to smack the like button, subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video. Where Nick Bosa buys a bag of bricks.